flag, Cadet Captain Rene Guerra. American Guard, Cadet Major Raquel Cerda. Texas flag, Cadet Sergeant Major Giselle Gonzalez. Texas Guard, Cadet Second Lieutenant Ruby Martinez. Pledge of Allegiance and Texas flag led by Cadet Second Lieutenant Andrea Moreno. Everyone will please join me on the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas flag. In honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, indivisible. Thank you. Please be seated. First I'd wake up, I decide which just tacos I want to eat. <laughs> and then I just every and then from there on I just focus my mind on school. My experience here is, is, has been pretty good and I'm kinda getting to a point where you know like I feel like it, it turned was over. And I'm just realizing that it went by so fast. From being a freshman, a scared freshman, to being a senior that you know, kind of goes to school. But I mean, I'm I'm very proud to be a Bobcat. I hope people that come to this to the school achieve many accomplishments and goals to get them further in life. Street at the birthplace. I was born and grew up here in San Antonio. I've been to South San all my life. Well, since freshman year, I've been in the Academy of Health and Sciences. And this senior year, I was a part of the practicum of pharmacy techniques. So this year, I put a lot of focus into that. I was interning at a pharmacy, it was a drugstore and pharmacy. And my key to success was always knowing that I needed to do better. I always knew that I needed to push forward. Reminding myself, like, you need to do this because it's going to pay off. You need to do this because in the end, like, it's going to be worth it. Like, don't worry now, like, it's going to pay off in the end. This past April, I was admitted to, into the Early Assurance Pharmacy Program at the University of Incarnate Word. And what that says is that 
rather than earn my bachelor's in four years and then apply and get admitted into ph pharmacy school at UIW, after only two years of undergraduate study, I'm able to apply for pharmacy school. So I'll be able to get my doctorate in pharmacy in six years rather than eight. And that's all because I ended up with um, the 4.0 GPA I have now, my SAT scores, because of all my work I put in high school. In the end, I'll be able to finish college right now. Society, student council, I'm in Upward Bound, um, I'm the French horn section leader in the Mighty Bobcat Band, and I'm a member of the National Hispanic Institute. I think a big uh, key to my academic success was I've always been raised to believe that I'm a reflection of my parents and of my family, and I always wanted to reflect how. My parents always sacrificed everything for me to have the opportunities that I had. So I've been accepted to the University of Southern California and to Stanford University. And um, I believe that I'll be at Stanford University in the fall. So I think that that's going to open a lot of doors for me and several opportunities. I'm very blessed to be able to accept these So I'm very excited about what the future holds for me. Don't be afraid to dream of going to big universities like Stanford or USC or any other university. Don't be scared to go out of state and um, don't let people tell you that you're not able to achieve these things because you're from South San or because you're Hispanic or because anything. Because you most definitely can.
here. And this it is an honor to be here to kick off the start of the school year with our convocation theme, Students First. When I was selected as the Five Palm Teacher of the Year, then Teacher of the Year for the district, I couldn't help but feel extremely humbled. Like many of you here today, putting our students first is just part of my job. It's what we do every day. Being a teacher is such a rewarding experience. I'm so blessed to have the ability to shape the minds of the children in our community. process for being considered for Teacher of the Year, Ms. Ochoa, Ms. Ochoa was asked, what has made the greatest impact on you as a teacher? And her response was, and I quote, every year in August, I look forward to returning back to work with the anticipation of meeting my new students. I know that there will be challenges, both academically and, and behavior-wise, but my goal is to have a significant impact on each of my lovely students. I always encourage them with words to help boost their confidence level and to love school. Thank you, Ms. Ochoa. <laughs> and I know that all of you, whether you are a teacher, a bus driver, an aide, an office worker, cafeteria worker, custodian, administrator, whatever your job might be here at South Sand, you look forward to the start of the school year so that you can boost the confidence of students and ensure that they learn and love school every single day. So with that, let me ask all of you to please stand up. Please stand up at this point. And I want you to join me in reciting together our school district vision and call to action. You received a little card when you came in. So you will pull it out and please join me it's called to action, and I'll lead it. Ready? All students will enjoy successful education experiences to empower them to make decisions and enrich their lives in the future that they create. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, this, this mission statement was created about 15 months ago with the input of, of over 200 people that included teachers, students, parents, business leaders, board members, administrators, really a cross-section of our community. And, and on the vision statement, 
when we say that students will enjoy successful education experiences, it is because the students that participated in this process of developing our strategic pro uh, plan told us that they learn more and remain more engaged in classrooms where they have enjoyable experiences. They did not say, make it easy for us. They simply said, make it enjoyable for us so we can remain more engaged. With the accountability results that we have re recently received, I have no doubt that our teachers are providing instru instruction that thoroughly engages their students. So now, it is my turn to engage each and every one of you by thanking you for not only your dedication and hard work, but the resulting success that comes from that dedication and commitment. Last year around this time, when we received the state accountability results, South Sand was only a, one of only a few school districts in Bear County that had no IR schools, not one. In South Sand, there's not one IR school. That's a low performance school, not one. You know, there are 18 school districts in and around Bear County. Many of these districts have a high poverty level, as we do here in South Sand. A few of the other districts tend to be a, a bit more middle class. The type, the type of school district where many of those children, children have experiences at home that our children are not fortunate enough to have in their homes many times. But as you can imagine, the media and others usually compare us to school districts that have high poverty levels. But seldom do we, do we get compared to, to uh, school districts that are a bit more middle class. But today I'm going to do that because let me tell you, our schools perform at those levels. So let me share some information with you. So, uh, in, some of, in, some of the, in some of the evaluations and assessments, our students are performing at levels that are very comparable to Northside, Alamo Heights, Bernie, Judson, Medina Valley, and some of the other more middle class districts. Of all the school districts in the San Antonio area, that had no IR schools last year, South Sand was the only one with a poverty level as high as 89%. And even though nearly nine out of 10 students that walk into your classrooms every day are children of poverty, all of you have stepped up to ensure that no matter who walks into your classrooms, you are going to ensure their success. You are going to change their lives as they move forward. And we appreciate that. Let me give you one more caveat from last year's accountability report. Last year, 10 of our, 10 of our 15 traditional schools received at least one academic dis distinction for a total of 27. And by the way, the year before then we had 21 and the year before then we had 11. So every year you keep increasing the distinctions and that's something to be really proud of. A school receives a distinction when they perform in the upper quartile on the particular STAR test in comparison to similar schools. And since 10 of, 10 of our schools received at least one distinction, that means that 10 out of 15, that means that two-thirds or 66.6% .6 of our schools received at least one distinction last year. Of the total number of school districts in Bear County, that was second best overall. Second best out of 18 schools. <laughs> North, Northside was the only district that beat us. While we had 66.6%, .6%, they had 70%. But let me tell you, on this, one, on this one measurement, our schools, your schools, your work, beat out Alpha Heights, Northeast, Sir Cibolo, and many others. And so at this point you might be asking, well that was the results from a year ago, where are we today? I don't have those results. They were released this morning, 20, 25 minutes ago. We have someone back there on the computer crunching the numbers. If we get the information before we dismiss today, we'll, we'll let you know. We have a really, we have a really good feeling that you, you have repeated 
it probably improved on what your performance was last year. We'll announce it before the, the, the morning is over if we get that information, so let's just wait. So at this point, what else is going on in South Sand? Well, for one thing, we're getting ready to go into our second year of our early college academy at South Sand High School. And over the last year, some of you have heard me make remarks at different, at different functions, and I always keep repeating the early college, but I'm going to tell you why. Last year, 128 students completed their first year of the early college program. If these young people, these 128, if they stay the course, and I have no reason to believe that they will not, they will graduate from high school with not only a high school diploma, they will also graduate from high school with an associate's degree, and that is two years of tuition-free college for those That will be in May 2018, a little, a, little, a little less than three years from now. And from that year forward, approximately one-fourth, approximately 25% of all of our high school graduates from that point forward, we'll be graduating with an associate's degree. And I can tell you today that no other school district in Bear County, and honestly, I would almost venture to say no other school district in Texas, although I don't know that for a fact at this point, but for sure no one else in Bear County is on the same path of graduating one-fourth of their, of their young people with an associate's degree. This district is the only one that will be doing that. students at the high school that are not part of the Early College Academy, they also have an enhanced opportunity to take more college credits. Many of your young folks participate in career technology. We are partners with Palo Alto College so that, so that in their situation, they'll graduate with, with a, a work, work certifications so they, they can move on from high school and, 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 and land a, a good job as they leave our high school. So let me pause here right now, and I want to ask Delia Sanchez from Five Pops. I want, I want to recognize Delia, because this past year, Delia Sanchez was the, the San Antonio area, all of San Antonio, bilingual teacher of the year. Before I sit down, I, just, I have this little gnat bother me. Before I sit down, I want you to know that the school board a few weeks ago has approved a pay raise for all job categories at 2.25%, 2.25%. With the exception of administrators, they'll pick up 2%, but that's still a good, a good raise for administrators. In, in addition, the district contribution on your health insurance will be will be increasing by about seven and a half percent. So, so as I wrap up my comments, we are all looking forward to an exciting school year, where we will all ensure that all students will enjoy successful education experiences to empower them to make decisions and enrich, enrich their lives in the future that they create. God bless you, God bless your students, and God bless South Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Savannah. Now it's time to welcome our first performers of the day, the Price Elementary School Folklorico led by Paul Suarez.
a great performance. Up next to speak is our board president, Mrs. Connie Prado. Thank you, Ms. Ochoa. Uh, at this time, I'd like to just change it just a little bit. I've always had the privilege and the honor to stand here before you and welcome you, but I am not the only trustee that represents this district. So I'd like to have Ms. Estrada and Mr. Mata come up as well and give them an opportunity to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. Morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to welcome you to the start of another great school year. I know that by your mere presence, you will bring smiles to the faces of thousands of students and parents that you will be touching every day. The start of a school year is a very demanding but it's also an exciting time for you and for the parents and the students. And it can be a very stressful time as well. As educators, you are entrusted with a very special commodity. The children that come to you are the best that the parents have to offer. People who choose to work in schools, whether you are a teacher, a bus driver, a custodian, a support staff, or an administrator. You choose to work in a system that prepares, inspires, and promotes the American dream. Each of you plays a vital role in the hopes and dreams of our students. As we come together, I am reminded of a quote by Nelson Mandela that emphasizes the importance of your work. And I quote, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. You have an awesome responsibility. Let me thank you for the countless hours that you will be spending to make sure that our kids succeed. I assure you, the non-tangible rewards will be priceless. There's three things that can make you a successful teacher. Be fair, be firm, and be consistent. You will succeed. We had just said goodbye to a graduating class, and now we say hello to a new group of students who stand ready to be nurtured by you, their, or their teacher, and their principals as well. We have also said goodbye to a group of dedicated teachers who gave their all to our students and to our school system, and they are most deserving of their retirement. However, there is a group of teachers who have earned an acknowledgement, and at this time, all the new teachers to our school district, please stand and be recognized. hardships. I ask that you rise to the occasion and meet their challenges. 
Your job will not be easy, but know that you are not alone. We have some of the best tenured teachers that will be here to guide you. Our job is to provide you support and support system you shall have. The Board of Trustees appreciates what you do and we are fully committed to ensuring that we have the best teaching and learning environment there is to offer. I would like to thank you, encourage you, and remind you how important you are to our students and to our community. And for that I say thank you, have a great year, and God bless you. and soul into everything that you do. Um, I have found a new respect for educators sitting in my seat. I've seen the struggles, I've seen the hours spent after school, before school. I've seen teachers come in on their own time and just give everything that they have. Um, I look forward to seeing what you're gonna do with these students this year and I know you're gonna knock it out of the park. Uh, welcome back to another school year. God bless y'all. Good luck. As I was driving this morning on Palo Alto Road, I could see a glow. And now I know what that glow represented. It represented one place. As serving as a school board member, there are a lot of ups and downs, disagreements. The best thing that I like about serving on the board is days like this, where we can get together and plan for a new school year. We heard our superintendent the future looks bright. Here at South Sand, it can only get brighter. God bless you. Thank you, board members. Now it's time to welcome performers from the South San Antonio Dancing Cats Officers led by Daniel Mabry.
Thank you, Dancing Cat officers, for the wonderful performance. Up next is our keynote speaker. Sonny Melendres was born to make people happy. He is a broadcaster, motivational speaker, and author, and has presented at over 1,500 schools locally and nationally, inspiring students, teachers, and parents. He was twice named Billboard Magazine's National Radio Personality of the Year, inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, and is included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as one of the top 100 radio personalities of all time. His accomplishments and awards in virtually every area of entertainment are far too numerous to mention, but he is most proud being able to give back along the way. The City of San Antonio named the Sunny Melendres Community Center on the west side to honor his commitment to education and endless causes benefiting disadvantaged youth and families. He has estimated that he has raised over $100 million in money, goods, and services for charity during his career. Prepare to be inspired and encouraged for the work you do. Please give a warm South Set ISD welcome to Mr. Sonny Melendez. <laughs> Convocation, but it should be called the South Sand Student First Pep Rally. Because you guys have got the spirit. And I will tell you something else. I was told it would be streaming live, and what they were going to do was when my presentation came on, they were going to stop the stream because of the uh, whatever the, uh, the contractual parts of that. I said, no, keep the stream going. In fact, I will tell my Facebook followers as well as all of my other followers around the world that this is the place to be. Okay, in our short time together here, what I'd like to do is connect the dots between what you do every day, every school year, and what, what I do and what I've learned along the way. And I love the theme, Students First, because that's really what it's all about. It begins with the students. And when you stop to think about the amazing power that you have with every single student every single day. Now, I was talking to Ms. Ochoa, and by the way, another big hand for School District Teacher of the Year. wanted to be a teacher. She said, in second grade. I said, really? She says, yes. I was so inspired by my teacher that I went home and I went into my room and started teaching. And she would be in her room talking to herself and standing by her bed and literally imagining students. And whenever a uh, cousin would come to spend the night or whatever, they would be a student in her little classroom. Can you imagine? And this is back in the 1980s when everybody was getting their first computer and PlayStations and what else. And she wanted more than anything else to have her own overhead projector. <laughs> Can you imagine? But you see, that's what a great teacher does. That's what a great educator does. And I'm glad that everyone was mentioned, bus drivers, maintenance, literally everyone that comes in contact with any student along the way. There are four words, four words that you can hear from the time you're little to the time you're grown, all your life. And when you hear those four powerful words, they can propel you from where you are to where you want to be. And so it is with our students. The four words are, I believe in you. Imagine. I believe in you. When someone that you look up to says, I believe in you, it plays back over and over in the corners of your mind. Years later, 
You may be a district manager, a district uh, a supervisor. You may be in any capacity, but you'll remember that teacher. That's someone who said, I believe in you. And it's not just by words. It's by a nod. It could be a thumbs up. It could be a smile. It could be something that was written on a piece of paper that gave that student that extra boost. And so it was with me. I had a wonderful childhood. I had so many people along the way. And it started with my mom and dad. I'm going to tell you a little story. It began in a little barber shop on the east side of San Antonio. We had uh, literally a little area that we lived in in the back of my dad's barber shop. My dad wanted to save for my brother and I to be able to have the education that he and my mom did not. So what he did, he cut hair, and every time he would cut hair, he charged $1.25, and I was a shoeshine boy. And I could still see him do this. He would give me a dollar, and I would run to the corner drugstore, and I'd come back, and I'd give him the four quarters of the change. And he'd open up this little cabinet in between the two barber chairs, meticulously all day long, and there were six cigar boxes in there. And he would take the quarters and he'd put them inside each cigar box. One was for rent, one was for clothing, one was for food, one was for our education. Imagine getting your family by a quarter at a time. But in doing so, he taught me and my brother what was really important about life. And it is how we give to others. So I had three dreams. The first one was radio. I knew that I wanted to be on the radio. This is how bad I wanted to be on the radio. I would listen to radio stations like KONO, KTSA here in San Antonio. And I would fall asleep with a little radio underneath my pillow listen all night long. And I knew that one day I would be there. Just like Ms. Ochoa knew that one day she'd stand in front of a real classroom with real children and teach and do what she was born to do. So I wanted to be it so bad that I had a little record player. Some of you are too young to know what that is. But look it up. Google it. And so I had a record player and a, and a tape recorder. Look that up too. <laughs> and I would make my little shows, little five minute shows. And then I wanted to play the shows for my friends. And the way I would do that would be over the phone. And we didn't have a phone. Our phone was the pay phone inside the barbershop. And it was like eight, nine o'clock at night. The barbershop was closed. My dad would give me like three or four dimes. And I would go inside the barbershop, sit on the shine stand, and call usually girls that I wanted to impress. And I would play them this little show. Looking back, I know they probably just put the phone down and came back and said, oh yeah, that was great. But that's how bad I wanted to do it. Now think about it. I was podcasting before the internet. When you inspire students to be what they are born to be, to be a bit, to do what they were born to do, you will inspire them to find a way, and they will. Every single day, you have an opportunity to do that. So as time went on, there was another dream that kind of manifested itself, and that dream happened when I was watching my favorite cartoon show. Yogi Bear. I found out at an early age that I had this ability, almost like I had a, a recorder in my head, where I could mimic voices and even sounds that I heard. I'd be at the grocery store, and somebody would walk by with an accent, and I'd start talking like them. And my mother would say, no, mijo, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I'd say, mom, that's the way he talks. So I'm watching Yogi Bear, and Yogi always had that great attitude. Hey, 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 I'm Yogi Bear. I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> and what was his little friend's name? <laughs> yeah, you do watch cartoons, huh? Yogi, Yogi, 
we're going to get in trouble with the ranger. Tengo miedo, vato. So I'm watching this one episode, and there was a little duck that kept following Yogi around. And he thought that Yogi was his mother. And he kept saying, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? And this little duck voice. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that voice. So I turned on the TV, it was a little black and white TV that we had with a coat hanger for an antenna. And I got my little recorder out and I started doing it. Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. I mean, I did it every day, over and over. I tried it for my mom. I said, Mom, listen. By the way, my mom is this tall. <laughs> and I would say, Mom, listen. Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mom? <laughs> my mom, you know, mothers, I'll tell you, you guys have uh, just an incredible power in what you do when you encourage us. She would say, Ah, mijo, parece Bugs Bunny, que bueno. She didn't know. So I tried, and tried, and tried, and one day, out of my little 11-year-old mouth came, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? I don't have a mama. I'm just a poor little orphan. I'm going to tell you the short version of the story because we don't have a lot of time. Fast forward now, it's now maybe 11, 12 years. I've started my radio career, I get awards nationally, and I go from San Antonio to Los Angeles. Now I'm on a radio station in Los Angeles, living my dream on the radio. I get a call from an agent who says, have you ever thought about doing cartoons? I said, are you kidding? All my life. He says, let me have a sample of your work. So I gave it to him. Two weeks later, he says, you got your first job. And I can never forget driving my little 1971 Ford Maverick into the parking lot of the Hanna Barbera Studios, the home of Yogi Bear and that little son. I wasn't there as an intern, I wasn't there as a visitor, I wasn't there as an observer. I was there to work with the original cast on new episodes of the Jetsons television series. Can you imagine? 11 years old, back in the barber shop, there I am. You see, when you visualize, as these students visualize their future, and when you ignite that visualization, with your encouragement, with your words, I believe in you. You can take them and soar them to where they only dream of being. Now it gets better. I'm in the studio with these incredible professionals that have done it all their lives. But I learned a lesson. I have earned my right to be there. And so that's why I was doing all these other different voices in these, the series. Well, if you remember the Jetsons, he worked, George Jetson, worked for the Spacely Sprocket Company. And his boss was named Mr. Spacely. Well, the voice of Mr. Spacely, sitting right next to me, was a man named Mel Blank. When you get a chance, take a look at his Wikipedia, incredible biography. He was the voice of all the Warner Brothers cartoon characters, including Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, Sylvester, Tweety, on and on. Guess what? He became my mentor, taught me that the ladder of life was this. You're here, and someone is pulling you up to where they are, but you always have the opportunity to pull someone to where you are. And so he did. He would have these conversations, and he taught me many of his voices. Want to hear some? Yeah. Yeah. I won't tell your students about this, okay? <laughs> Be very, very quiet. I'm looking for a little gray weapon. And when I find that weapon, I'm going to tear him apart, whim for whim. <laughs> Have you seen a widow 
way of wearing. Yeah, big ears. Yeah. Big eyes. Yeah. Big teeth. Yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? Mm, I turned into a pretty town. I did. I did turn a pretty town. <coughs> you think you're full, pretty town? You're a pretty town? What's your name? So, two dreams accomplished. Then there was another dream that kind of came into my life. And by the way, opportunity does knock sometimes. But sometimes it just taps on your window. And sometimes it drives by in front of your house and you've got to go out and flag it down. This is what I mean. When you see something in a student, something that you know that they're capable of, you can't just wait for the right opportunity. You have to create that opportunity. Let them know how you feel. Let them know what you see in them. Tell them, I believe in you. You have so many incredible opportunities and so many lives that you can literally change with those words. Well, indeed, I had an agent who encouraged me to put together something for a creation of the Disney Channel. And it was 1980, and the Disney Channel was going to go on the air in 1983. So rather than wait for some kind of an audition for a host for the show, for any show, I created my own show. And so they got me in front of what they call the suits. Imagine. There are four people, literally very stoic, lady and three gentlemen, and I'm standing in front of them, and I'm going through my gyrations, I'm saying, the show does this, and it does that, and it does this. And then, as I'm doing it, the woman, she looks over at one of the gentlemen, she goes, and I thought, oh great, now they're making fun of me. But I did not let up. I literally kept going, and afterwards they said, Sonny, that's really not what we're looking for. However, because of your enthusiasm, we think that you would be great for another show called You and Me Kid, a show I ended up doing for almost 10 years on the Disney Channel. All because of the fact that I had that enthusiasm. And now as I look back, I have to tell you, Mr. Mocker was talking about this to me as we sat here watching all of you cheer. He says, that's enthusiasm. You know, the word enthusiasm comes from two Greek words. En means in, and theos means spirit. So to be enthusiastic literally means to have the spirit within. It's beautiful. So when you use enthusiasm, as Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever created without enthusiasm. But Dale Carnegie said, if you want to be enthusiastic, act enthusiastic. It's game time. It's game day. Every single time you walk into your classroom, walk into your school, walk out of your house, get in your car, it's time to literally give it all you've got. Imagine, do we have any Spurs fans here? How many times have Spurs won the championship? That's right. Five. How many more will they win? Five. Endless, right? Now imagine, imagine, you any Tony, Tony Parker fans? Okay. Imagine, imagine Tony Parker in the locker room, and he's saying, hey guys, I'm having a bad day, you know? Tim, don't throw me the ball, you know, I can't, uh, I'll, I'll go out there and everything, but uh, I'm not feeling it tonight. Can you imagine how long he would lose, he would end up on that team, Pop would trade him like that. And so it is with you. You're in there, and this is the classroom. It's not a battlefield. This is literally a garden that you're watering every single day. And some of those flowers, some of those plants, are going to bloom to be as beautiful as Miss Ochoa here. I have to tell you that all of the times that you have to literally go in there, you become not only a teacher, but a great teacher. The, the difference between a teacher and a great teacher is a great teacher inspires imagination. Inspire the imagination of every single one of your students this year, and you will literally 
have them come back year after year. By your applause, how many have actually already had students come back to you and thank you for what it is you did in their lives? There it is. There it is. A testimony. So what I'd like to do is we get ready for this school year, and I want everybody to stand up, and I want to show the world the South San ISD spirit. We're going to hand this camera. I'll point to you. Everybody start cheering right now. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. 